Welcome back to Making with Mark. In this episode, we'll paint and add the finishing details to the first of three robots in the series. And since he's built like a worker droid, I've decided to paint him a matte yellow color. So first things first, I want to mask off some things that I don't want the yellow paint to get on. Primarily, this is going to be the tracks here. Now, these tracks are uh, pretty cool. I mean, they, they're almost the color that I want them to be right out of the gate and they kind of have this rubbery look so they're very realistic so I definitely want to keep the yellow paint off of them it'll be much easier to do this than to try to cover up yellow on these things later So after adding a coat of the yellow matte paint, you can already see a huge difference in the model. I took the masking tape off of the tracks and wow, you can definitely see that contrast between the gray and the yellow. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. So right now I'm just going in with some silver details here and I'm just picking pieces and parts of the robot that look like they should be something other than yellow. I'm kind of going for a balanced look, so I want to pick and choose uh, specific pieces here to add this metallic color to. I don't want too many in one spot or too few. I just want to sort of balance it out all the way around the robot. You can see here that the silver metallic is really sort of a thin paint. It doesn't cover very well, and especially on this really bright yellow base coat. I tried adding a couple of layers, and I just wasn't real happy with the way it was turning out. So I actually, off camera, did a couple layers of a dark gray acrylic, and then I found that going on top of that with the metallic really covered it much, much better. And the metallic, it just looks good on top of the dark gray. So that's really the look that I was hoping for initially, but it ended up working out good. I'm sort of picking and choosing more parts here to paint silver. So I've got this drill bit looking piece here on his left arm. I definitely don't want that to be yellow. It's it's going to be distressed and detailed a good bit more here later, but I definitely want to start hiding some of that yellow right off the bat. I decided to go ahead and paint this little spring mechanism antenna thing out of the top of his head, uh, silver metallic as well. And so far so good. Just continuing to work around the robot, so I'm back around the front here, adding some more silver details as I go. And this is kind of like a an eye or some type of sensor, and then you've got some other little important looking, you know, control pieces on the front of the robot. Now, I initially painted uh, these couple of bits silver, and I went back later and added some gold accents. I really thought that set things off, but um, more silver for now kind of working my way to the lower front here. And so far, so good. Now I've changed up colors here, and this is a neat color that I found called Pavement. And it's actually sort of a dark grayish black color. It dries to a nice matte finish. And I thought it did a really good job of making these hoses and pipes look realistic. And like some of the other colors, I did end up going back over it with a couple different coats, but this one covered much better than the silver did earlier. I was really happy with the way this turned out. And here I'm just working my way around the robot, all the way back around to the front, and just finishing up these cables and hoses. And now changing colors again, 
I'm going in with some black detail. So here on the right arm, there's this little control box looking thing, some kind of gadget on the front here. So I'm painting it up black. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the other colors. I'm going to look around the robot, you know, especially areas where, you know, the arms meet the body and the track system meets the body. Some of these other little boxy, gadgety looking pieces. I'm going to paint those black just to sort of set off a difference there and a little bit of a contrast. And again, this is just another layer that I'm building up here. And there you go. That's all of the black pieces painted up. And you can see, again, it's really coming along nicely. And this is one of my favorite parts of any project like this. Um, just when you think you have things looking pretty good, you go in and you get a little crazy here with this wash. So this is actually the distressing part. It's going to really bring everything together. And what I do is I just mix a little bit of water and acrylic black paint here. And I'm just going to liberally put this on. I want to work uh, certain areas, a small area at a time. I don't want to do too much at one time because I don't want it to dry. I want to keep it wet like this so that I can then come in with a damp paper towel. And I'm going to basically sort of sponge away or wipe away the majority of that wash. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm leaving you know, some of the black down into the nooks and crannies and crevices here. And this is just going to give it just a whole different level of realism. That's one reason why I really love this part of each model here is, is adding this grungy, grimy, realistic effect. It just makes it look just war-torn war and used and realistic. Here you can see I've added uh, some black around the back here. And you'll notice this is a little thicker and sometimes I, I like to vary the amount of water that I'm mixing into the paint. If I'm going for a little darker look, I use less water. And if I want a little thinner look, I use a little more water. So here you can see I'm, I'm just making my way all the way around the robot. And again, on the tracks, I really want to just kind of work this paint in. I want to make sure that I don't miss any of those yellow spots. You can imagine on a piece of equipment like this, all the gritty, grungy dirt and grease that would get into all these little, these little places. And it, it wouldn't stay nice and bright yellow for long. So I want to really make sure I work the brush in here and get a lot of this paint in here. And then again, I'm going to follow up once more with a damp paper towel and just sort of buff the high spots here, leaving the paint in the low areas. So here I'm coming in with some burnt sienna, and this is another acrylic wash, just a little bit of paint with some water. And I always like to do this as sort of a second coat. I start off with the black, then I come in with the brown, and you can vary the amount that you use here. If you're going for a little more grungy, dirty look, of course, you can leave more there. Uh, here, I don't want to leave too much of the brown. I don't want to completely cover the black. I want them to kind of fuse together and just give it a kind of a used, worn, maybe even a little rusty or corroded look here. So much like the black, I'm going to work my way around the robot. You can see the tracks here. You know, I'll purposefully let some of that brown get onto the tracks as I was working around, and I even dabbed some there as well. And here I decided to come back with some gold accents just to sort of set off the front of the robot. I felt like it needed a little bit of pop, and I think that worked out really, really nicely. I love the gold paint. I'm pretty happy with the way things are going so far. There's just a couple more little details I want to add here. I really want to go with like a caution tape sort of look, uh, decal on uh, both sides of those tracks. So what I did is I just made a little stencil with some masking tape and I just used that to sort of paint on the lines to both sides. And I thought that was a nice little detail. Makes it look really industrial. here you can see those painted on lines. I think it really just added some character to that open blank yellow spot there, really kind of filled it in. I thought that looked great. 
after taking a look at the robot for a little bit, I decided it, it had a little bit too much of the grunge, um, kind of dirty, distressed look. So I just took a clean paper towel, uh, dampened it a little bit, and then rubbed over some of the high areas there. And I felt like that really gave it less of a dirty look. It still has the grunge and the realistic look. I just took some of the excess off, still left it in the cracks and crevices, and just sort of polished and buffed it off of the high spots there. After looking at the model, I still felt like it had a little bit too much yellow. So I grabbed this pure orange, again acrylic, just a cheap craft paint. And I'm gonna go after this tank on the back of the robot here. I think there's a lot of yellow back there. And you know, to be realistic, I believe the tank probably would be a different color. And much like, you know, earlier painting, I realized this orange just was not covering the yellow as well as I'd hoped it would. And I knew I was going to be in for several coats here. So this actually took about four different coats, you know, with some dry time in between. But eventually, it did end up covering pretty well. I wasn't too worried about the coverage. Um, and it's a little bit of a rough... Uh, look here but being that it's already distressed and I knew I would be distressing uh, over the top of the orange I wasn't overly concerned about it and I think it ended up turning turn out pretty good.